speak to you today about the gospel. I was reading a uh, news story online recently from the Christian Science Monitor, and the um, writer of this uh, editorial, uh, partly news story, partly editorial, the writer was uh, asserting or making the case that the modern day church, or as he called it, the evangelical church, is endangering of uh, ceasing to exist, or at least uh, diminishing to the point of no influence whatsoever in the modern world. And uh, he attributed it to basically two causes. The first of those was because the modern evangelical church has made the mistake of aligning itself with political movements. And secondly, has lost the ability to articulate the gospel effectively and thereby to be able to transfer uh, and pass on uh, its ideals and message to uh, its younger generation to, for whom uh, the message of the modern evangelical church uh, has really no impact and no relevance. And basically, I agree with what this person said. Uh, it is a mistake for the church to align itself with uh, political movements and political ideas. That's because, for one thing, we have something far more important to talk about uh, than political issues. And that is the gospel. The gospel is far more important and far more powerful than any transient passing political fad of the day. Now the Apostle Paul uh, lived in a time when there was uh, plenty to complain about politically. The emperor was Nero and uh, he was a, a lunatic, much worse leader than anybody we've seen in our modern world. Uh, yet Paul says that he's got uh, nothing else to talk about except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's what he wrote to the Corinthians. And here in Romans chapter 1, the passage I'd like to read to you today, Paul says in verse 16, Romans 1, 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now before I go on reading, let's just talk about that for a moment. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What he meant by that was not that he's not embarrassed uh, to carry his Bible around or he felt uh, you know, a, a temptation to be ashamed that way. What he meant was I'm sticking to this message no matter what. The reason he felt compelled to say that was Paul got a lot of criticism for the message of the gospel. Now, when we talk about the gospel, and when I say to you today, I want to talk about the gospel, uh, usually it doesn't really ring a bell or it doesn't make much impact, and a person might shrug their shoulders and say, well, big deal, because to us, the word gospel doesn't really mean anything. Uh, to us, the word gospel, when, I, when we say, I'm going to give you the gospel, that just means well, everything that comes out of the preacher's mouth is the gospel. But that's not true at all. The gospel is a specific, particular message. Sometimes we use the word gospel to talk about oh, what we take uh, as you know, missionaries take overseas to foreign countries. We say, well, we're taking the gospel to all the world. And really, in reality, what we're taking mostly to all the world, in many cases, is just Western culture and just trying to replace the cultural norms that are existing elsewhere in the world with our own cultural norms, uh, which are no better. Uh, the gospel has nothing to do with that. And so uh, it's no surprise that uh, uh, what, what happens in the back of a person's mind when, when they hear, I'm going to preach the gospel, well, that's something that doesn't apply to me or that's something boring, some kind of a boring uh, thing we take overseas. Uh, people overseas need to hear it, but we here don't need to hear the gospel here in Christian America. Or uh, Christians might say this, well, the gospel is something sinners need, but I don't really need it. I need something more, something more in-depth, something more... Uh, attuned to my life. But what I want to tell you today is what you need more than anything else is to hear the gospel. And especially, I think, Christians need to hear the gospel. Of course, sinners do too. People who are not Christians, they need to hear the gospel. It's got a good message of good news for them. But Christians themselves, I think, many times need to hear the gospel as much as anybody. The word gospel literally means, in its literal translation, the word gospel literally means good news. And see, what I think Christians need more than anything else today is good news rather than bad news. Uh, so if I stood up here today and said, well, I'm going to talk to you about your behavior and how you better straighten up and how uh, you better fly right or God's going to be upset with you or you're not going to get the blessings of God unless you change your behavior, that's not good news at all. That's bad news. In fact, if I talk about you and point the finger at you and make it a message about you, that's not good news. The reason the gospel is good news is because it's not about you at all. It's all about Jesus. Uh, you know, Paul, when he wrote his epistles, uh, he gives the gospel in the first part of his epistles. And he doesn't really talk about uh, us as Christians and our responsibilities as Christians at all until he gets to the very end of the epistle. And then the way he presents it is to say, uh, this is how we walk, this is how we live in the light of what Jesus has done for us in the gospel. So the gospel is not a message about you and your behavior and how you better change and straighten up. It's a message about Jesus and what he's already done for you. So Paul here says, 
in verse 16 of Romans chapter 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now the reason he said that was he got a lot of criticism. Paul, uh, for him, the message of the gospel was a single thing. It was about Jesus, and specifically the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And the human response to that is to believe in Jesus. You know, if Paul were, was pressed, as he was sometimes, and had to give the gospel in, a, in, a, in its most concise, abbreviated form, he could do that. Uh, for instance, when he was thrown into jail in the city of Philippi, and uh, God sent an earthquake and opened the jail, and everyone's bands were loosed, and the jailer was going to commit suicide, kill himself because he thought his prisoners had fled and it would have been better for him to go ahead and kill himself than to fall into the hands of the Romans after allowing his prisoners to escape. Uh, the jailer about to commit suicide, Paul stopped him and said, do yourself no harm for we're all still here. And this man trembling came before Paul. He was trembling because he was this close to death. He was about to take his own life and evidently he had heard Paul uh, in prison or maybe heard, his preach, heard him preach or maybe he had um, uh, uh, information about why Paul was thrown into prison, what he was preaching. So this jailer came to Paul and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? A, a good question, a valid question. And here's what Paul didn't do. What he didn't do is what many people today would say, well, uh, sit down, get comfortable, it's going to take a long time to explain it. There's many, many steps, lots of things, and then you can never be sure after that. No, Paul could sum it up in a, in a certain way. He could state it with definitiveness with no ifs, ands, or buts, with no qualifications, he said to this man in answer to the question, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved and your house. Paul could preach the gospel that simply. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Now, that, no doubt, was good news to the jailer, uh, who was about to die uh, by his own hand, to hear that in order to be right with God or to be saved, um, only one thing is necessary, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll be saved. That's how simply Paul could preach the gospel. Now, it was good news to the jailer. It was good news to the Gentiles in general. Uh, and Gentiles flocked to Paul's message. It was good news to anyone who recognized the fact that they were a sinner or alienated from God. But there were many people in Paul's day to whom it was not good news. And these were the, uh, the Jewish people, the, 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 the Pharisees especially, and the scribes, and the upper uh, the strata of the rulers of Israel. And not only that, anyone who uh, tried to follow the law of Moses um, <clears throat> and thought they were doing it, they didn't like Paul's message because when you come along with a message that says the only thing necessary for salvation is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, a person who thinks they've been doing all this work and working uh, and, and working and working to try to achieve right standing with God, a person like that says, well, where does that leave all of my work? If you're just saying believe and you're right with God, where does that leave me with all of my effort and all of my good works? Well, it leaves you uh, in the position that those good works are meaningless. They, we're not saved by the good works that we do according to the gospel. So people in Paul's day and people today criticized him for his message of grace, his message of believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved as the gospel. They didn't like that because uh, it left out human effort out of it. And it made everybody equal. And so a lot of people didn't like it. And furthermore, there were people in Paul's day, like there are today, the Greeks, for instance, who followed the Greek philosophers, you can read about it when Paul spoke in the book of Acts on Mars Hill, uh, People, the intellectuals among the Greeks who said, this is nonsense, this is foolishness. You're telling me to believe in someone who is executed by the Romans as a uh, criminal. You're saying, believe in him? What can the death of one man have to do with me? And I've even read people today who claim to be theologians who say the same thing. One man said, I failed to see what the death of one man 2,000 years ago what impact that can have on my life today. Well, for Paul, it, it did have an impact because it was the whole core and center of the message that he calls the gospel. So on the one hand, the, the religious people who thought their good works were more important than just believing in Jesus and uh, didn't like that message of the gospel. And on the other hand, the secular society around Paul to whom the message of the gospel was just foolishness, uh, Paul said to all of them, and in the face of all of that criticism, I don't care. I don't care what you think. I'm going to stick with this message of the gospel. And that's why he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Notice again, it's the good news of, not of what you need to do, which would not be good news, but the good news of Christ. The gospel is a message about Christ. 